Well, I had some folks inquire about the landing skid systems that I'm using for my EDF jets and other aircraft, but primarily for the EDF jets, because I, I've been flying EDF jets for about a year now, and I couldn't belly land them out on the surface that I land on because it would just rip up the foam. So I had to get the fuselage up off of the hard pack where I land. So the first landing skid systems that I designed for it were rigid. You know, they're made out of PVC pipe, uh, uh, landing or wing protectors, you know, things of that nature. So they didn't have any give, they didn't have any shock absorption. And while they did keep the fuselage up off of that hard pack so the foam didn't get ripped up, what was happening was because they didn't have any shock absorption and because it was really rutted out out there and bumpy and has divots in it, what would happen was even if, because you have to bring EDFs with a little bit of speed, uh, as soon as I would touch down, even if it was a nice soft touchdown, if, if one of those rigid landing skids hit a bump or a divot or a rock, it would launch the plane back up in the air. and by the time that happened, you have lost so much of your momentum that when it launched back up in the air, you were either at or below stall speed. So it seemed like every other flight session out there with an EDF jet, I was having to make a repair to the fuselage. So I thought, either I've got to come up with a better landing skid system for these jets, or I'm just going to have to not get any more EDF jets until I have a better place to land. So the criteria that I set out for landing skid systems was number one, it had to be fairly lightweight. Number two, it had to prove to be uh, durable. It had to introduce very little drag, if any, and it had to be shock absorbing. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of clips of the Zeta Ultra Z Blaze because this was the first shock absorbing landing skid system that I came up with that worked extremely well. So I've had this jet out for several flight sessions now. It has had this landing skid system on it from the very beginning, from the very first launch, and I have not had to make a single repair to this EDF jet. So this landing skid system has worked out extremely well. Okay, so here's a couple of clips of a couple different landings with the Zeta Ultra Z Blaze, and then after you see those, I'll, I'll uh, show you, I'll explain how I put this together, the type of material that I used. I will have links to this material and tools that I use in the show notes, and I will show you uh, that uh, material as well. So here's the landings. All right, we look good in that direction. There we go. Oh, that was nice and pretty. Okay, before we have any company come through, let's see if we can get it on the ground. Whoa! Okay, so... So the landing skid systems, you know, it's got a very wide wing plate. And so what I decided to do was I used some very dense foam. And this foam is made out of um, transmitter stick protectors, you know, those little donuts that you, that sometimes they put over top of the sticks of the transmitters when they pack them. Anyway, it's very dense foam, but it gives, you know, it's foam, so it does provide some shock absorption. So what I did was I took one of those, and they're fairly tall, so I actually cut it in half, 
you know, I cut the round part in half and then put the round part down and then I, I cut a half moon shape out of those two parts. So out of one of those, I could get four of these. So I drilled a little hole in the top of them where the main surface is going to attach to the fuselage. And I used a little piece of barbecue skewer. And I embedded about five millimeters of the barbecue skewer into the foam and about five millimeters into the fuselage. I put it all together with hot glue. I took a um, utility knife and I cut a slot uh, right up toward the top on each side. <coughs> and I took some I took some plastic cutting board material. It's about it's a little, I think most of them I think are a little bit less than one millimeter thick, but they're just as tough as all get out. And they're very they're very flexible and very pliable. So it made that material makes perfect um, landing skid shoes for these pieces of foam. So I hot glued those to the top uh, to the bottom of the foam, but those slots where I cut, I cut the I cut the cutting board material a little bit wider than the foam. So I could also put some hot glue along the edges to make sure you know it didn't come loose. And then I bent the tab, tabs on each end of that. Um, cutting board material inserted into those slots I'd cut in the foam and glued those in. So I knew that those landing skids were not going to go anywhere. And then any time that I need to replace any of that material like I have on the front, I got a crack in one of them, so I just put another layer over the top of that. But it's proved to be a very good shock absorbing landing skid system. If you watch those landings with the, uh, with the Ultra Z Blaze, it doesn't bounce up off of that hard pack unless I have a hard landing and nothing is going to prevent that. But if I come down and I sit down nice and easy, it absorbs all that punishment so the fuselage is not absorbing all that punishment. And then I took some thin pieces of zip tie and right here where the uh, raised portion of the foam is for the servo to protect the servos, I just cut slots in those and made a just a, you know, a half circle out of that. Um, zip tie material to keep the, the wing tips up off the ground and that has worked out extremely well. So I've used uh, similar landing skid systems for my sport gliders now. Uh, you know the, the, the loops for the wing protectors to keep the wings up off the ground but the, the two center pieces front and back you know are, are what you're landing on and that has worked out extremely well. I haven't had a single problem with this landing skid system since I put it on here. So it's proven to be durable, it's lightweight, it's low drag, and it's shock absorbing. So it met all my criteria. So I'm very, very happy with that system. Okay, now I'm going to show you the material and the tools that I use to create that system. And then we'll take a look at the second system that I put together for the um, Ishin F-16. Okay, so the tools and material that I use for that, I don't have any barbecue skewers up here. You can get barbecue skewers anywhere. But I've got the Gorilla Glue Gun. It's a full-size glue gun. I wanted a full-size glue gun. I wanted one that had a low and a high temperature setting, which this one has. I wanted one that had the wire stand and not the plastic stand. I've been using this for a couple of years now. I haven't had a problem with it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll have a link to it in the show notes. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. It also comes with several glue sticks that come with the gun. So I've been using it for a couple of years. I haven't had any problems with it. I really like it. All right, and here is the little donut that I was talking about. It's very, very dense foam. And so, as I stated, you can see it's pretty thick. It's, you know, it's pretty tall. So, when I'm making my landing skid systems, I just cut these in half. I cut them in half, and then cut them in half again. And that gives me four half moon sections that I can use for that. And then I just use pieces of barbecue skewer to glue in there, attached to the fuselage. And I have not had, I have not had one of those come loose yet. There are links to these in the show notes as well. I'll put a picture of them up on the screen. Okay, and then for the plastic material, like I said, it's, it's cutting board material. And I, I stole these from my wife um, when she wasn't looking. 
and because it's it's look at that it's very pliable and it's extremely thin it's extremely lightweight and yet it is just tough 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 stuff and it uh, I'll show I'll put a picture up on the screen of these and there's a link to these in the show notes as well but they come in like a three three or a four pack and I think they're about 12 inches by 15 inches you know rectangles and so I've I have I've had those three for I don't know several years, several years now. So I use this material for a lot of different things, not just landing skid um, shoes, but a lot of different things. And so this is all that I have left. So the ones that you see uh, linked in the show notes are the ones that I'm going to be purchasing as well to, re to replenish my stock. Uh, the glue gun that you see linked in there is precisely uh, the glue gun that I have, that I purchased, and I purchased it from the same link, and uh, and these foam. Of course, mine came with, with, I don't know, a couple of little transmitters that I got. I actually had these, and I saved them because I knew I could use them for something, but I don't see these very often anymore, so I've got links to them in the show notes. So if you guys want to make similar landing skid systems, everything is there that you need other than the barbecue skewers. Um, you can use barbecue skewers. You could use uh, like two millimeter. You can cut two millimeter pins out of a two millimeter carbon rod and use that. Um, whatever you want to use. I just wouldn't go. I wouldn't go larger than about than about three millimeters, which I think is the diameter of the of the barbecue skewers because you know half of this is going to be about 10 between 10 to 12 millimeters you know in width and so I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be any closer to the edges than that you know with the with the pins in the center but it worked out fantastic that was the first system that I came up with and I'm extremely happy with it okay now the landing skid system for the F-16 I want you guys to see this now watch as I push this down you see the see the shock absorption that that provides. Okay, so now I want to show you a couple of clips with landings on this jet, and then we'll be back. But great flying now. All right, so there's my timer. All right, so I got it back into stabilization mode. Bring it in for a landing. But it just seems to it just seems to fly really well now. But it was a long, long slog getting this one set up. Got a bit of a crosswind. Wee! <laughs> it really slides a long way now. Let's go another circuit. Lose some altitude and some speed. Like a wider swath coming in because it is very restrictive with these uh, EDF jets. Ta da! Okay, so you saw one of those landings when I came in and touched down was not so soft of a landing, and yet it stayed on that hard pack, it didn't bounce back up in the air. So this landing skid system, I think, is my favorite one so far, and it's the one that I am going to use going forward. Okay, so the material that I use for this, of course, hot glue again, and I use a couple of sections of PVC pipe, two-inch PVC pipe, but I'm going to do that a little bit differently going forward, and I will explain that. But I use 36 inches zip ties to make these shock absorbing landing skids for this. And it's, it's very lightweight, it's very low drag, it provides a really nice shock absorption. It keeps the fuselage up off of the ground a little bit higher than um, the landing skid system that I have on the Blaze and I like that as well. So I purchased these, these, these just came in a five pack. 36 inch zip ties are about nine millimeters wide. Uh, they're a little bit less, I think, than two millimeters in thickness, 36 inches long. 
but they were I bought them at a big well-known discount box store and they were pretty expensive per zip tie so I went searching for zip ties that are this size this width and this thickness and this length online and so I'll show a picture of those now and I provided I think two separate links to those because there's a different count one's a 10 pack I think and one might be a 50 pack but even in the 10 pack it is a lot less expensive per zip tie the link that I provided you than what I paid for these at the local big discount box store so when it's time for me to replenish these I will be purchasing purchasing mine from the same link that I provided you. So if you want to purchase some of these from that link, it, it's going to save you some money compared to what I had to pay for those. So, all right, so anyway, I'll put some pictures up on the screen while I'm talking about it. But I took, I took a, a real thin, I cut them about, uh, I would say about six millimeters wide, two millimeter PVC. I did the same thing, you know, I cut, I cut a six millimeter section out of the end of, the, of a two inch PVC pipe and then I cut that in half to make you know the half moon and then I just hot glued that onto the bottom of the fuselage to give me a base to work from. And then I started with one layer of this 36 inch zip tie. I, I cut a section, I don't know, I would say that sec, the sections that I cut and it's going to depend on the aircraft that you're going to be putting them on too. But, um, I would say those are probably about 80 millimeters in length maybe, 70 or 80 millimeters in length. So I found that with the weight of the EDF jets, that one section of zip tie just wasn't rigid enough. You know, it compressed too easily when I was coming in for a landing. So what I did was I just doubled those up. So if you take two, two of your zip tie sections, glue those together, and I just glued them together with hot glue and then glue that to that front part of that PVC pipe where you've got that little round section so that you've got a curve coming back so that when it lands you know when it lands it's it's got compression to it and you know how tough zip ties are zip ties are just really really tough plastic so these have worked out exceptionally well they're just as lightweight they're just as durable as the first system that I showed you but the advantage to using these is that the material is more readily available than, than these are. They're less expensive, you know, per zip tie than these are. And you're going to get, you know, more out of that material. Um, more, um, more skid systems you're going to be able to build out of this zip tie material than you are out of this material. So that worked out absolutely fantastic. The only mistake that I made on this F-16, if you watched it when it came to a complete stop, is it rolled over on its wing, you know, right before it came to a complete stop. So the mistake I made was I went kind of inside uh, where these little fins are on the, on the back side, right over top, right over top of the compartment where the EDF unit is. And I, I guess those were designed to be landing skids. I don't know. I don't know why those are there. But, uh, but I put the landing skids right there. And they're just not wide enough. You know, they don't have a wide enough footprint to keep the plane from wobbling over. So what, what I should have done and what I will do on the F-16 the, the F EDF version of this, because this is the pusher, pusher prop and motor, is I will mount those right here on the inside of that wing plate so that they're much, much further out and then I won't have to worry about that wing dropping before it comes to a full stop. It will stay on its feet. I don't know why I didn't think about that in the beginning, but anyway. Okay, so what I was talking about doing differently with the PVC pipe material was instead of cutting those in half moon sections, I think what I'm going to do is get maybe three inch PVC pipe and cut a narrower section of the PVC pipe because the, the PVC pipe will be a little bit thicker. But I think what I'm going to do is take my heat gun and, and heat that PVC pipe so that I can flatten out most of it and then just have a little front curvature to it to, to enough material to glue 
those zip ties to. And then that'll give me a longer plate section to glue to the bottom of the fuselage and it'll provide additional support and it will make, I think it will make it um, more durable, even more durable than this is. So, and PVC pipe is dirt cheap. I don't have a link to the PVC pipe because it's a lot cheaper just to go to your local hardware store and get a two or three foot section of PVC pipe and that's going to make you a tremendous number of landing skids. So, that's what I'm going to do going forward when I, when I um, redo the landing skid system on my um, F-16 EDF. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the zip tie landing skids with probably three inch PVC pipe so that I can um, have a plate mount to give it support underneath that wing. But um, that has worked out tremendously well. I was really surprised, you know, how well that worked out. Even when I touch down a little bit hard, it doesn't bounce it back up in the air again. So, anyway, that's how I have developed my landing skid systems and the landing skid system that I have on this. I think it's just absolutely fantastic and it's extremely low drag and a very lightweight landing skid system. So for those of you that are looking for some way to do that, this system has worked out extremely well. So anyway, I hope that was informative. Uh, for those of you who are wondering how I made those landing skid systems, that's, that's what I came up with. You know, it's, uh, it, it took me a few different versions of landing skid systems before I found one that worked the way I wanted it to, and it worked very, very well. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.